you know, the old traditional mm. um, father, mother, children living all under one house. That's also Emily and Richard. Yeah. That and then even just down to the the dynamics of the the family unit, how um, the biggest fights seem to happen at dinner time. Mm. Also in the Gilmore Girls, yeah. the can I can I can I talk to you for a moment just outside? Okay, even though we're right in the middle of dinner, <laughs> let's just step out for a moment. Yeah. Like that's also in the Gilmore Girls. Yeah. So one thing I thought of while watching Marvelous Miss Maisel is that the main character. She's basically Lorelai in the 40s. Mm. Like, I see a lot. They're, cause they're, they're really similar because I feel like the main character's attitude reminds me a lot of Lorelai's. Obviously different because they're supposed to be different characters, mm-hmm. but they coincide right. together mm. a lot. So, And then, like, she, her best friend, like, she has, like, a best friend that's, like, who's completely by her side and, like, reminds me of, like, Suki and then, like, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think uh, comparing them, obviously, Mrs. Maisel is a lot more um, mature. Yes, you know, mature. But then also, I think while there are some archety- archetypes that they share, I feel like it's able to make itself distinct enough to be walked through all of their separate entities, basically. Yeah, oh, yeah. You sure. know, like you don't, some authors or um, artists or what have you create multiple works and all of them feel samey sometimes. But I feel like with this, um, as far as we've seen, they feel distinct and um, Miss Mezul being fresh mm-hmm. and new rather than, okay, let me just create a new iteration of this story so I can get more money. It's mm-hmm. more genuine. Yeah. It's uh, maybe a somewhat similar plot structure, but then filtered through these new and different characters and yeah. a different time, especially. Yeah, yeah the, the time the really time. makes yeah. a it's huge difference. Yeah. Huge flavor. I mean, tell me a little bit that. What's your impression of some of the dynamics? Well, as being a female, I'm so glad I'm not born in that decade because, honest to God, if I was, there'd be a lot of issues. <laughs> it's just so crazy to see, like, she would wear her makeup to bed yeah. and wake up so early to make herself look perfect. Like, I would never do that. Like, if you want to be with me, you're going to see me ugly, and that's <laughs> it. Like, that's on God. Like, that's <laughs> it. And it's just like, the, there's so much of, like, they put so much, like, I don't even know what's crazy, just, like, time and effort just so they could look perfect and like please their man mm. Mm. and like that's so in- that's so insane to me because like i could never imagine myself doing that i would like obviously like want to be a good partner and stuff yes but like that's like all i do yeah. and like what yeah. like, their entire and identities are centered around their husband yeah and when mm. the husbands don't even do half of what they do you know what i'm saying like they do they run the whole household and everything in their lives and blah, 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 blah. And just, it's insane. It's- now, I mean, and it, 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 it does kind of reference the culture of the time, too, because, like, if you went to the store, right. no matter who you were, you went dressed up. Yeah. Yes. But basically, uh, or even if, when we watched uh, the movie The Little Women, mm-hmm. there was this aristat- aristocratic lady, and she's having her niece read her a story so she's dressed like she's going out on sunday mm. just to be sit in her own living room listening to a story that her niece is reading to her mm-hmm. so it's funny how uh, things have evolved over time yeah. you know whereas people can go to the, the store in their pajamas now and it's right. yeah. no big deal i wonder if that's that kind of uh mindset of you know always looking presentable had to do with presenting your office and who you were mm. you know what i mean because mm-hmm. now we're expected to be treated the same no matter what mm. which i appreciate more technically mm. but back then it was um you know you were treated off of your your social class or mm. you know what you did what your occupation was mm. you know mm-hmm. so i wonder if that had to that had something to do with the way that people dressed I, I think, you know yeah because even the clothes they wore would be different from yeah, someone right. who was working like in a factory right. compared to someone who was working in an office. Right, yeah. It was like a representation of who you were and you know where you stood in realms of like the what would it be called the social ladder. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that must have been really important to everybody. 
so then we could use that to segue into what did you guys think of uh, the the film Little Women? Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> so I I really like certain moments. Mm-hmm. Certain moments were brilliant. Like say maybe if they were all giggling together. I think there was a certain scene where they're kind of. Um, enacting some sort of play that Joe had written and yeah. I just it really reminded me of when we were younger we would do and that. we would do stuff like that yeah. it just really felt nostalgic, nostalgic. to me but the, while I did appreciate those scenes there were a lot of them we were just I this you said this exactly verbatim was that we were kind of seeing separate events happen mm-hmm. that didn't really have anything to do with each other or show us who these characters were yeah you know what I mean like they're oh what would be an example? Um, see, I, I don't even really like remember too well, but all I can say is that I didn't really have a good foundation as to who these characters were and why they made certain decisions. And in fact, I'm not even sure that I saw many characters make many decisions at all. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you said, things kind of just happen. Yeah. I don't know how to explain that, but... I, I yeah. think to, to delve in a little deeper what, what I saw, and, you know, it it was it was a good film overall, and some of the moments really shone through, just like you said, mm-hmm. but I felt as though I was watching from a distance. Right, yeah. There was a lot about the directing style that didn't really pull you in as much. Right. Mm-hmm. And especially, I think she was um, trying really hard to do things in such a different way that she was kind of gliding past certain moments mm. in and out, going back and forth in time, kind of undercut right. oh. the emotional importance of some of those scenes. There was this one scene where, I don't remember any of the characters' names, but um, the youngest daughter who's in France, and the, what's his, Teddy? And she's I, in her art room, and she's painting, and he goes in there, and they just talk for like five, ten minutes. It's completely pointless, absolutely no reason for it to be in the film whatsoever and it's just not necessary at all doesn't show anything about the characters or yeah, <laughs> yeah it's just unnecessary just like a, f- a filler just a fill in mm-hmm. yeah yeah i think yeah that's that's a good point too you know i think because there are a lot of movies like little woman like mm-hmm. you know, there was like a time period wasn't there where like uh jane Eyre came out mm-hmm. with jane a bunch of jane austen based what, films weathering heights weathering heights i think there was a time period there where it kind of i think that hollywood goes in cycles it does yeah. there have been there's cycles of these period pieces when they're all the rage and then they kind of yeah. go away for a while but like, then they come back superhero yeah. films are really big right now yeah, yeah like just how like cowboy words Cowboys, Cowboys, Cowboys were, 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 Cowboys were, were westerns. Yeah. So, and so then we could segue to this now. That versus uh, Downton Abbey movie. Oh mm. my god! Like that. I think that's, that, that's a really underrated movie. That's because I didn't hear anybody. Like, well, of course, especially our age talking about it. Right. I think <laughs> they made a joke on SNL about how it was a bunch of about a bunch of maids yeah. just cleaning the yeah. entire time. Yeah. Oh my god! Kind of no, I appreciate that movie flavor. so much. Yes, yeah. Yeah. the flavor. Because you have this, well, I don't think you had to see the show in order to understand, because it's like, oh, the king and queen are coming and stuff's mm-hmm. happening. Yeah. But yeah. it's just it's more than that. It's like, you're seeing everyone from the top to the bottom, what they're experiencing, when this time is going on, and just like how they're dealing with it. But like, it's just so good. And like, because we've seen the show, it's even more enjoyable because we mm. know the characters and we love the characters yeah. so it's just like ah, chef's kiss you know when i when i took writing classes one of the things they said is that as a writer when you're approaching characters and the things that they care about you want to have as much relevant specific and concrete details as possible mm. and i think what's great about downtown abbey is that you know what every character is distinct and you know exactly what they want yes and yes you, the writer just spends time showing you all the ways that they go about trying to achieve the things that they want mm-hmm. or because of the time period if they feel the pressure to not be as overt and not go after the things they want you right. see that conflict though yeah. mm. you see them deep in, in the inside wanting to uh, go after their dreams or be themselves and if they're unable to mm-hmm. there's a great amount of uh, dramatic irony there yeah. mm-hmm. uh, and that's what makes the writing really come to life yeah. I also really appreciated the kind of um, note of uh, kind of, um, what, what, what would it be called? Coming to the Call of Duty. Mm. 
what would the what's there's a certain phrase about standing yeah. up call to action call to act, call to action or um oh geez what is it just basically um standing at your post mm. and doing what's good for the team oh, i yeah. feel like that's a message mm. that is completely lost especially yeah. in our american society that yeah. we have right now very yeah. individualistic very yeah. do what you want even if it um harms those around you even if it only benefits you mm -hmm. and kind of messes everything else up then oh well you do that good for you but this was completely different and i really 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 loved that because i'm sick of that message <laughs> because yeah. honestly, you ready to preach yeah I, i'm sick I, of that I, message i'm absolutely <laughs> sick of it because mm. i think it's what would it be nihilistic mm -hmm. that kind of well it doesn't matter anyway because yeah. you know I'm only here for a certain amount of time and scientifically that doesn't mean anything so I'm just going to do what I want um, even if it hurts other people but I don't I don't believe that even for a second mm -hmm. I think that what every decision that we make in every moment affects those around us and affects the way that people around us make decisions as well mm -hmm. I think yeah. those those decisions uh, kind of spiral or what would the butterfl butterfly yeah, effect the, the, comes the into place. Effect, you know, yeah. The things that we do affect something else, that affects something else, that affects something else. And I don't think that that's even common knowledge, mm. you know? So I appreciated mm. the fact that even though Mary wanted to take off because she was maybe feeling a little dissatisfied, mm -hmm. she mm. didn't maybe want the Downton life. Her grandma yeah. was like, no, this is what uh, I basically trained you for. You're basically the younger me. Stay mm. here. Yeah. Um, continue yeah. on the family name and um, you know you're not going to regret it and it's all going to come out for the yeah. good and she stayed <sighs> and I appreciated that yeah. or like this is totally none of the things we've been talking about been in um, Anastasia huh. at the end the, the <gasps> cartoon one at the end she just leaves to be poor with the like the love of her life instead of being a whole queen to rule yeah. a country her duty and, and for they, a man like, and they spent so much time at the beginning of that movie, showing how important it was to have, yes. a, home, to have a, a heritage. Yes. In fact, there's, there's some music in there, which is like oh, extremely Jesus. moving. Yeah. Yes. And it, it just so illustrates a, like the loss of heritage, why that's so mm. terrible, and what it would mean to even get a shred of that, to, yeah. to have some idea of who you mm. came from, yeah. what, your, what your family's purpose was, the lineage. And then they kind of just toss it out there by yeah. the end for some kind of, I don't know, American she love story. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. yeah. Cheesy love story. Right. And the kind of thing that they throw away now, at, like Frozen 2, I really like. It's so I really good. like Frozen 2. I also the first really one. delves into that. Number one, with part one, getting away from the whole romance is everything plot point that Disney yeah. movies have kind of followed for a while. But then 